Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. I want to talk to you about what we mean by the free market. Have a look at this. This is my glasses case. And this glasses case is a thing of beauty. It is wrapped in black leather. It is made of wood. It has a metal hinge. And it has taken millions of people in the free market to produce it before it got to me. So, what do I mean by that? Well, let's have a look. So first of all, let's consider one of the materials that goes to make this, the wood, okay? Now the wood here is chopped by loggers in South America. They use tools, chainsaws, and other tools to do their work. Each one of those tools has to be produced by millions and millions of people. The market produces those products and it gets them to our logger. The logger then chops the trees down and in his daily work he goes to the local cafe, he has food there and a whole new market provides him with that food. People produce the food, people serve him the food, people cook that food. That's yet another market. So we've already developed, we've already talked about lots and lots of different markets involving thousands and thousands of people. And all I've done is talk to you about the wood, one material in there. Okay, what about the other materials? So there will be leather grown in, uh, uh, on uh, leather, from, whoops, leather from farms in South America. We ha also have in here nice felt lining inside. That would have been produced in Bangladesh. Uh, we have the metal here, which would have been mined in China. All of these things have their own chains of production and lots and lots of people involved in it with lots and lots of markets ending up with my, my product here. Then, of course, there are the factories. The factories who take all those materials and process them and turn them into the product that you hit, see here. They shape it, they cut it, uh, and they create the end product. Once the end product has been made, or, or when the raw materials are being transported, things are being moved across the world. They're being transported by trucks, by ships, by airplanes, and each one of those forms of communication, uh, forms of transport and the communication network that's needed for that to happen creates another market. So all of these now come together, all of these different little markets come together to produce my, my humble glasses case. Millions of people. And that, that really, if you think about it, is pretty marvellous, isn't it? We have millions and millions of people who don't know each other, they don't know what each other is doing, they just know what they're doing, and they are coming together you voluntarily using their skills and their labor to produce a little bit of this product so that I can have this to stop my glasses getting broken in my da daily life. It's almost as if there's an invisible hand directing the whole game. That invisible hand is known as the free market. Free market, as we just said, is made of lots of tiny little markets. A market being any area where goods and services are exchanged um, and uh, to meet each other's needs and wants. So we now have a free market, an invisible hand, which is allocating resources jolly efficiently so that we get what we want. How amazing is that? the free market. However, if it's so amazing, why do things go wrong? Because a free market does go wrong from time to time. Let's take my glasses case again. Those cedar trees that are being chopped down are contributing towards deforestation. The trucks, the planes, the ships transporting all of these materials and end products are adding to uh, CO2 emissions and therefore to climate change. 
somewhere along this production line, I'm sure there will have been uh, some exploitation of workers somewhere along the way. Maybe using some child labour, maybe just um, just underpaying and just not providing good terms and conditions, etc. There are lots and lots of things that are happening along the way which are not things that we want to happen, even though we do want to have this end product. When those things happen, inevitably the government then has to intervene. And when the government intervenes, it tries to rectify these market failures. So when the market has been going wrong, those market failures can perhaps be eradicated up to a point. Of course, the government's not infallible either, because when the government tries to um, it tries to eliminate those market failures and it can do so through a range of uh, of tools that it has at its disposals. It can do it by taxation, giving subsidies, legislating, perhaps nudging people into behaving differently, all sorts of ways. When it does all of these things, sometimes it creates its own problems. That's called government failure. So as economists, we look at how the free market works, we look at where it fails, we look at how the government tries to put it right, and we look at how things go wrong when they do. Sometimes. Thanks for joining me. I hope you find that interesting. Bye-bye now.